Third facet? Well, UC is a state school, so it works a bit differently, but still. You guys have endowments, universities have endowments. Harvard's endowment is $34 billion, okay? For example, this money is invested through hedge funds <coughs> in companies like General Electric, produces Apache helicopters, Elbit, so on and so forth, all the companies I've mentioned. Hmm? In divesting, in calling your university to divest from this company, you're making on, not only a statement, raising awareness, but you also can have a very serious effect because it's a lot of money. Okay? We all saw what the campaign at Berkeley did, right? Huge noise. Um, and you know what someone told me once? So someone asked here before in the sort of intro round, how do you know if it works or not? When Hampshire divestment, I was getting like, I think I got over 3,000 um, death wishes. Beautiful, beautiful people, you know, it's like, you should die, blah, 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 go back to Auschwitz. Yeah, very nice. Um, and I was kind of freaked out, like, I'm used to this shit, but it, it was freaky. Like, Alan Dershowitz, do you know him? Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful person, beautiful soul. <laughs> um, called me at 8, 8 a.m. and said, uh, Time? I said, yes. This is Professor Alan Dershowitz speaking. I was like, I was half asleep, but the sassy asshole that I am is still, like, you know, stuck up. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, I think I know you. Aren't you this guy who wrote this book? What was it? The Case for Apartheid? Oh, I'm sorry. The Case for Israel. I'm sorry. I got the name wrong. <laughs> and the guy was like, like, he almost choked on his like, bagel and lux. And, um, <laughs> and then he said, you know, I'm going to start a document to boycott you personally and your university. It's the end of you. And the biggest thought of all, you will never go to Harvard. And I said, oh, no, just not that. Harvard. And I was like, yeah, I'm more of a young person. Than that. <laughs> but it's the worst thing you can say to a Harvard person. Both of them suck. Never go there. UC is much better. But, <laughs> um, point being, so I was kind of freaked out, and I went and I was talking to Naomi Klein at the time, and I said, like, ah, help us. We need, like, you know, big famous people to support us. And indeed, Desmond Tutu, like, supported us, Naomi Klein. Uh, seven Nobel laureates, other Desmond Tutu, supported the campaign. Um, Judith Butler, one of her biggest supporters. Iron Dutch Roy, the Indian novelist, Martha yeah. Woman. Uh, huge names, huge, huge names. Former head of the UN. Um, tons of people. Supported. Um, and this guy, I basically emailed them this like frantic email after the director's called me, like, guys, uh, we were a little, we need help, like, we, we need big names. Like, and Jimmy Carter actually was another person who supported it. But, uh, and I was like, okay, we need help, help us. And one of, one of the funny things that Naomi sent back to us was like, it was a very brief email. She said, You know when you know you're, good, you're doing something good? When your opposition is really freaked out. And now they're freaked out. It means that you're doing a good thing. So, you ask how you measure success? This year, the Zionist establishment in the United States set a fund of $6 million annually to counter BDS. That's a lot of money. We don't have that money, but we have brains. They don't. <laughs> um, but what it tells you is that they, in the words of Israel's Prime Minister, my beloved Benjamin Netanyahu, BDS is an essential threat to Israel. By which he means, not that it's an essential, I mean, he means whatever, but what it actually means is that it's an essential threat to Israel continuing its oppressive policies. And the reason is that, as I said, once they have to pay a price, because today, you get, guys, you need to understand this. You can, I can live as an Israeli in Tel Aviv, never see a Palestinian. This would disengagement and separation. This is apartheid. I can never see a Palestinian if I don't yeah. desire to. There hasn't been barely any violence against Israelis in the last five years. So in a sense, the economy is booming. The US economy is down the drain. Israeli economy, because it's so militaristic, by the way, different discussion, is booming, skyrocketing right now. In a sense, Israelis have no impetus, no reason to end this system of oppression without external pressure. This, this is the basic fact. Folks out there, screaming and shouting, yabba dabba doo, you know, they come to you and say, guys, can we have a dialogue? Can we talk about it? The point, the fact is, the person who asks you to talk to them the oppressor who asked the oppressed to have a conversation, a civil, can we have a civil conversation? This comes from a position of power. You can only do that when you have power. Hmm? But 
You know, the answer is very simply, if you're a woman, you don't converse with chauvinist men. Hmm? If you're a black man under segregation in the States, you don't come to white folks and be like, can we have a conversation about racism? Can we just get along? You know? And not really. You fight back. BDS today is the most concrete tool at our disposal that makes them pay a price for what they do. I'm going to end this at that and open for your questions. Thank you. Today, I'm gonna cut you off right here. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm gonna get back to you. Okay. The key. <laughs> anyway. Yes, you. Yes. Hi. 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 Um, Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, in light of um, our, do you want me to in light of our university's unprecedented uh, stance against the MSU in terms of the Irvine 11 and in yeah. terms of, um, I don't, remember, I don't know if you guys remember, but um, Chancellor Drake's email last year uh, condemning one of our speakers for even suggesting that he supported resistance. Um, I think one of the speakers made an offhand comment about Hamas or something like that. Um, our university has definitely taken a stance um, against the MSU, um, and that was just kind of the years that I'm sure a lot of people have been here, but in mm -hmm. past years, um, even more than that, with um, the stoles that the MSU wore and saying that it was supporting Hamas and all of that. Do you really think that BDS would work at a university like this when we're under constant attack from ZOA and other organizations um, based in Irvine? Uh -huh. Thank you, Thank it's, you. Very, it's a very, very good question. Um, let me try to answer. First of all, let's all remember, as I said, it's a tactic, not an end in of itself. Meaning you have to literally measure cost balance. Cost, cost benefit analysis, you know? Is it effective or is it not? Now, you know this campus more than I do. One of the principles of the BDS movement is that we don't have a leadership, okay? We don't tell folks what to do. People know their environments better than that. The leadership sitting somewhere else, okay? We give the tools, we help folks, you do your thing. So I don't know if you know better, but let me nonetheless try and answer, okay? This is an MSU event, so I'm going to say this, because I think it's important for folks to know what I think about this. this um, last time I was here, we were talking about whether this whole campaign should be led by an MSU or an SVP. Okay? And I very adamantly think it should not be an MSU campaign, it should be an SVP campaign. And let me just tell you why. I have, obviously don't get me wrong, it's not a question of my support for MSU, my respect for it, or any of that, more for Islam, but okay? I hope that's clear. Uh, point being that um, a political campaign, to me, should be led by a political group with a very clear political agenda, okay? Rather than a social cultural event, uh, and group. I mean, that has its place, it's a great place, it's remarkable, and it needs to do its job, obviously. But in terms of, getting a campaign go, I think it's an SVP. Now, it comes to answer your question in the sense that I think the affiliation with a religious group under the auspices of a very racist, anti-Muslim environment in particular, right? That's not that dude, I said that's what it is, because it's not the um, means that in a sense it gives them ammunition. Now, it does not mean that anyone should let go of their Muslim identity or religion and be like, oh, you know, okay, we're nice people, we're not really Muslim. You know, like, no, bullshit. Like, stand up for your thing. Stand up for your, what you believe in. No question asked whatsoever, right? But in terms of being strategic and how to run a campaign, I think it should be an SGP. Okay? That's the first part. Um, about the substance of your opposition and the, resp the proper response to it, I would say this. First of all, you guys know what I'm saying? Yes, you are unique. I think Orange County is a unique case to an extent. But the status quo the what we call the neutral position of everyone in this country, every institution, is Zionist. Okay? We need to know that. I mean, it's not like they've started neutral and then either bends one way or another. They, you are facing a situation where you are battling against people who are already biased, inherently against you. Huh? Might be more the case here than other places, but this is always the case. Okay? Is BDS the right thing? I think it is. 
I think the question is, however, timing. Okay? People always rush, and I don't want to shit talk. Um, the client keeps the bed. <laughs> your brother since UC San Diego SUP. Okay? Last year, we were in touch with them, and we were like, okay, guys, we had like a national PDS conference. We gave people all the tools about how to run a campaign, what to do, blah, blah, blah. All we ask is like, please give us a note so that we can get you international support. We have 100 campuses. Give us a week's notice before you do something so we can rally an entire world. Because you, I was like, I can guarantee 30,000 letters of support to you if you're trying to pass a, a, a motion, for example. And they have their own turn point, and I ran and rashed the uh, resolution for it and kind of failed. Okay? Point being, again, not to shit talk them, the point is actually to learn from our mistakes as a movement, is to say, you, we cannot lose this battle. Okay? Hampshire, to an extent, was not full victory, right? It wasn't Israel, it was like partial, so on and so forth. But it paved the way for others. In some way, it was the first to ever even consider this as an option, okay? Right now, after Berkeley and after Hampshire, we need to win. So you need to evaluate and be rather certain that you're going to win before you go ahead with the motion. What you do in the meantime is you build your ground. You raise awareness, you do what you do right now. Okay? Everything you do, you need to continue doing. But you also need to focus a conversation about Palestine, about Palestine, which is general, and say, guys, if this is what we all agree on, if this is what's happening, then this is where we need to channel our efforts. Okay? So all these things are not discrepant tactics, <coughs> but they're all a part of the same thing. Okay? So I would say to you very concretely, Assess your situation, build a movement, build a coalition, which is again another part of it being SUP, not MSU. Okay? It means you can have Christian, Jewish, Baha'i, whatever, Muslim students, everything uh, with one political agenda. Okay? Build your grounds, and one of the most important things, I think, in any political movement, but especially on this, talk to your African American brothers and sisters, talk to Latino immigrants, talk to Feminist groups, group groups. In a sense, it is about bringing the intersections of oppressions, the way in which they're always um, concomitant, they're always at the same time, they cannot be distinguished from one another, that you actually build power for a movement. Okay? Um, and do that. And Okay, like let's be honest, it's not always an easy conversation. We don't always agree, okay? But it's a matter of urgency to build strategic alliances with folks who, you know, have experiences that can make them identify with your cause. Or have the analytic capacity from their own political struggles to come to terms with what it is you're trying to tell them about Palestine. Hmm? So build your grounds, work slowly. I'm going to be like your mama right now <laughs> so, and tell you, take your time. I don't know if you moms have time. Most of the moms are like, go to school. You know, I want two engineering degrees, not one. The third should be in accounting. You know? But um, take your time. Like, work slowly, don't rush. And you guys should know, and I'll finish my answer with this. There is, I think, 92 groups on the national SGP list. I know some folks here are on this list. Yazidism, some folks on SGP. I'm in this room. Okay? You have support. You're not on your own. We used to think as possible right, activists that we are the only ones doing this. We're so original. No one has ever thought of it before. You know, instead of the hubris of like all political activists, I'm definitely not excluded. Same. <laughs> um, point being, there's a network of folks working on the same things. Especially in the UC system, folks have experienced it. it's a very similar system. Okay? Learn from them, talk to them, listen to them, and be in touch. There's an international movement behind you. You need to know that, okay? It, I mean, it's very important to know that. Um, we were shocked at Hampshire how, at how many support letters we got. I call it, I think, the president got 17,000 letters, mailed, not emails. Like, you know, people still send those things, like envelopes, you know, <laughs> you know? We forgot about this, but 17,000 people did that, okay? And this was years ago when it was much, much, much less popular than it is today. 
You have back, you have a noble lord to support you. So next time someone comes and tells you, this is not apartheid, be like, really? Nelson Mandela says it is. And you know, we're humble folks. We don't know. But I think Nelson Mandela can identify an apartheid when he sees one. You know? I think so. Maybe I'm wrong, you know? Maybe he's just like a bigot anti Semite. Oh, that's what one of the people there told me. Yeah, he just hates Jews. I was like, <laughs> yeah, like the biggest moral authority of the second half of the 20th century is just a bigot anti Semite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, next time an Alan Dershowitz calls you, tell him, this? <laughs> tell him, no, but literally, I'm not joking now. Tell him, these are my moral guides. It's Nelson Mandela, it's Esmond Tutu, um, and an array of other folks, okay? Who do you have on your side? Hmm? <laughs> Next question. Yeah. So after you graduate, um, what are some of the things that you can do to um, remain involved in BDS? I know California has their is, um, Israeli divestment campaign, mm -hmm. and they had, petition, they had a petition campaign, but I don't know how well that went. Um, and that was to divest from, I believe it was the California Retirement System yep. program. So mm -hmm. how can you remain involved after you leave UCI or, or your environment at, at a college university? Great question. Another part, um, which goes back to what I said before, about um, building alliances is also not to um, restrict yourself to campus activism. There's tons of local groups around you. I know that there's a very big, uh, very good um, LA-based group to do BDS, this California-wide BDS initiatives. Um, and it's important to bring the community